Hey, I'm, I'm Tracy with Legacy Woodwork and Machinery, and uh, you may have seen my face before. It's a little scary, but what I want to do today is introduce a good friend of mine, Harry Tippett. I've known Harry for a long time. He became a customer. That's how we got to know him. And over the years, Harry has made us look pretty good with his work. He's a very gifted designer, very gifted woodworker. So when he, uh, he came down and showed us this project, said, I want to show you what I'm doing now. I knew that we had to get it on film and let everybody see exactly what's going on. So Harry, I'm going to ask you, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Apple Press here. Well, uh, so there's a little bit of a story behind this. Okay. Uh, I've got a, a Macintosh apple tree in my yard uh, that I planted about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And it's, it's, this year it just was loaded with apples. And in years past, you know, we'd pick a few and we'd enjoy those fresh apples and what have you, but it seemed like the deer uh, eventually ended up getting a little more enjoyment out of that apple tree than we did. Yeah, I know that story. <laughs> <laughs> so this year I was, I was determined to do something about it and I thought, well, probably the best use of those apples is to press them into juice. So I got on the internet and I got looking around at what was available out there and, and uh, I decided, you know, I've got a really high performance tool in my shop at my beck and call. I think I'll just build one from the ground up. So I sat down and uh, I, I had a little bit of inspiration, Tracy, and that came from you. Uh, I remember you doing the threaded stool and I thought, hmm, that ought to be kind of interesting. And so I also had a, a program called Gerotics. Yeah, I'm familiar. That's a pretty awesome program. Yeah, so so I got I got playing around with some ideas and and it kind of morphed into what you see here. So I thought, you know what? If I spin the nut, I can put some gear reduction on that and really get some power when we got down to, to doing the press. That's awesome, and, and you know it's beautiful too. It's a work of art. It's functional art, is what I'd call it. It's it's freaking awesome. So tell us about some of the features. I noticed you got your wooden threads and gears, and what are, the, what are some of the other things, the challenges maybe that you faced when you were building this? Well, okay, so, so like I say, I, you know, number one, I probably would not have even thought about tackling this job, at least doing the, the threaded part on this, yeah. if it weren't for the machine and conversational cam. And, and we'll get into some of that, but, but some of the things that, uh, that I thought were kind of fun to do was doing these mechanically locked dovetail joints through three and a half inch thick material. Yeah, I noticed dovetail through three and a half inches. That's pretty intense. I wouldn't try that on a bandsaw either. <laughs> well, yeah, can you, I mean, it'd look like somebody turned a monkey loose with a carving knife if yeah. they did this on a bandsaw. <laughs> yeah. And so, so yeah, so the through dovetail, the gearing, the threading, one of the, one of the real fun parts of this was pocketing. And I use this pocketing technique just for a couple of things. One, to make things easy to disassemble and put back together. Oh yeah, I, I noticed here, if we pull this out real quickly, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some cool pockets in here and the whole thing, I guess, just yeah. comes apart, huh? Yeah, so it was really, you know, having the, having the vertical vise yeah. on the machine yeah. just made this a, a breeze because I was able to cut all these tenons on these parts and now did you, we'll get into that when the right. video, because yeah. you're going to show that, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. And I, I would imagine you probably set up to do multiple at one yeah. time, yeah. so instead of just one at a time? Yeah, the vise was big enough that I, I there are 24 of these slats in here, so I, I think I was able to get eight at a time on that vise. Oh, no kidding, yeah. so three times more productive yeah. than doing one at a time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right, and uh, I, I know you've got some wicked plans for the grinder back here. We'll get into that a little bit later. <laughs> I think you're going to like what you, I think you're going to enjoy. <laughs> and, uh, um, let me see, was there anything else that we needed to go over before we get started? Um, I, what, what are we going to focus on today then? Well, today I just wanted to show the process of cutting the external and the internal threads okay. on, the, on the screw and then the nut. So, so we call this a nut, essentially it's a gear, but we're driving, I think I mentioned we get about a 3 to 1 gear reduction here. You know, that kind of takes a while to get that done. So one of the other features oh, yeah. we probably ought to tell everybody about is, you know, we can pull this pin out. <laughs> And just put a put a nut driver on this and just run that screw. That's what your bolt right here is for. Yeah. So you can put your hand drill on there and drive it down. Yeah, so once you hit the mash, you just pop this back in and now you've got the you've got the force of this three to one gear reduction right here. So if you want to look good for the neighbors and the wife, you yeah. crank it. If you want when no one's looking, you put the, the drill on and let it go. I like it. All right, I'll tell you a funny story real quickly. We used to press apples too. I have an apple tree and one year we put them in five gallon buckets and we were going to go to our friends because they had to press. Put them in the garage, 
My wife came home one day and the deer had broken into the garage. She had a, a herd of deer in our garage eating our apples. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> All right, well, hey, well, let's get started. I want okay. you to step over the machine and Great. show us how we cut the threads in. That's exciting. All right, let's do it. All right. So hey, the first process I wanted to show you guys was doing the external threads on the apple press. Uh, the way I was able to program this was through conversational cam and so one of the really nice things about conversational cam is uh, on this shaft for example this side of the shaft is an inch and three quarters in diameter and this side is two. Uh, we're just saving a little bit of time this has already been turned to two inches uh, but what, what you do in conversational cam is you'll just look at your drawing and say okay well I need my inch and three quarter part right here and my threads right here and you just tell it, uh, you just fill in some boxes and tell it where you want those uh, cuts to be made. So we're gonna go ahead and show you that process. So hey everybody, I wanna show you how I set the part up in the machine. One of the really nice features about the legacy system is the button they have on their user interface that allows you to set up your turnings. And what that does for you is it sets the X and the Y origin and also the Z value of your tool. So it doesn't matter if you're running two or three tools, you don't have to worry about coming back to set the Z value, it will just automatically do that for you. So, hey, let's hit the go switch and get started. Now in my shop I don't have to do this because I have automatic tool change, but I just want to show you how to, how to do this with a manual tool change machine. So what's going to happen is I'm going to change this tool and then it will go over and touch off on the smart tool pad which will re-reference the value of the Z and we can just start cutting. So look, dead simple. Really all you have to do is hit the go switch and, and the part's done. So I just want to show you how this actually, where this part goes in the machine. So let's go take a look. We cut the shoulder, part of the assembly process and the threads so that we could take this apart. So let me just show you how that works. So now I can just take these apart and I just do that so I can maintain the machine, put a little oil on it when I'm done and there you go. So one of the important things we need to show you about doing internal threads is we need to provide some tool clearance as we pass down through the bottom of our part. So we've got a spoil board on the bottom of our part that we just attached with some screws. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to drop these into, this, into our low profile clamps here, just dead simple. And the nice thing about that is, is, you know, we've got clearance all the way around our clamps, so we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Okay, so in this step we're just going to cut the hole. I've already put the tool in, so now we're just going to hit the go switch and get going. Okay, so now we're going to cut the internal threads. We've already got the cutter loaded. We're going to hit the go switch and get going. Harry, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you know, easy it was for you to cut those internal threads and the external threads for both the handle and also the drive shaft here. So what do you got in mind for the next video? What do you want to show? So in the next video, we'll just go ahead and show cutting the profile for the gears. Sweet. 
Yeah, I think you're going to enjoy that because, like you said, Gear Rotics is just an amazing yeah, program. Yeah, it is. So let you, you know, design any type of gearing that you want. <laughs> That'll be fun. Look forward to that one. Thanks. Yeah.